Welcome, everyone, to the December 7th general plan uh, meeting. Um, if you would all please, a little housekeeping chore of silencing your phones. Um, and we'll do a roll call, starting with Deborah. Present. Jim Huffman, present. Jim McCarver, present. Terry Sapio, present. Ted Gamboji. Rod Moyer, present. Ralph Hess, present. Mary Fredrickson, present. And so, we have a number of... Uh, are these working? Okay. It looks like we have Don Michaelman is out. He said he may be, may be here. Gary Warab has not come on yet. And uh, Andre Carmen is absent today. And uh, I wanted to acknowledge two of our councilmen, Councilman Eric Moore and Brendan Montoya. Okay, we have some discussion items, the first of which is approval of the October 26, 2022 minutes. Do anybody have a comment on those minutes? Yes, Deborah. Yes, I have a comment on page three where it says Mr. Worley responded that the open space plan would be pr provided to the entire committee. It was not formally adopted by council. It in fact was formally adopted by council. I have the minutes, um, looked it up online, forgot to bring the minutes with me, but I think it was 2013 perhaps, or it was 2009, but it was formally adopted. It wasn't a unanimous vote, but it was, it did pass. It, it was adopted in 2009, correct? 2009. Okay. And we just got a copy from Joe Baines. I just found it in my emails today, the, co the approved copy. It, the information is correct, but so are the minutes. I said that. Well, I have one question on the uh, minutes. It has on page three that uh, member Moyer commented that he requested a copy of the last updated open space general plan at the first meeting. Is that the same open space uh, plan as the 2015 no. general plan? No. Okay, that, that's my question. So has that been provided? I, 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 I just, so I asked Joe Baines from Parks and Rec to give me the last adopted copy that was adopted in 2009. I just found it in my email today of my 290 emails I had. <laughs> so do we need, do we need to amend those two comments in the notes? No, we'll we'll get that out as soon as we can. All right. Any other comments? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I move that we approve the minutes as presented. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Also want to recognize our good mayor, Phil Good, has just arrived. Okay, do we have a staff update per chance? Yes, okay. So um, staff has been working with our IT department on a new website. We just got the uh, domain uh, secured. It's gonna be planprescott.com, pretty easy for people to remember. Um, we have been looking at other websites. We've been doing this for about a year of looking at other websites that have done through recent uh, updates on their plans. And there's a few of them that we, I wanted to show you. Um, Chino right now is um, in the process of updating their general plan. So they have a pretty nifty website here. They do have a consultant on board. But um, this is one that we're looking at to see what kind of information they're providing and um, how they're displaying the information. Like when they get, um, once they do their, their meetings, they've had one community meeting um, that was held, yeah, November 21st, and they have a second one in February. But it's really nice to see how they're um, showing the information that was uh, gathered at that meeting. So they had boards up, which is pretty typical for open houses. And then they had different questions and people had the dots where they can go and mark it. So these are things that we're kind of looking at. We do plan on having four open houses in probably May and June we're looking at. And so we're looking at things like this to have at those meetings to get input from the community for these type of questions at that meeting. So this is one that we're we were looking at. 
Another one that we were looking at was Flagstaff and Coconino County are working together collaboratively on a, a regional plan. So it will uh, be the comprehensive plan for the city and the general plan for the county. Since with counties, it's just adopted by the Board of Supervisors. It doesn't go to the voters, but with the cities, it does. But because they are so intermingled together, they're working together on a regional plan. But they had a really cool website that we found last year when we were doing all this analysis. And we we're looking at the information they showed on their website and how it's laid out. And uh, we're kind of you know, taking, taking bits and pieces from different jurisdictions. But this is one that we were looking at and how they're uh, putting the information out there, like when they have meetings. They are recording them, they're putting them on the websites, and they also had other information. They're letting people know what phase of the plan they're on because they created a, uh, right here, a planning process. We're kind of looking at that too to put something similar together so people can see what phase and where we are in the process. So we are, this is another one we're looking at. And another one that was really good was in Greensboro, North Carolina. They just updated theirs and they won a national award, but they have a really great website on all the, they have some great ideas, like they came up with six big ideas that came out of all the input and how they're gonna implement that, um, where all their maps are. But they also had an implementation section on there that we're hoping to have on our website. Our website's gonna be separate from the city's website. It's its own standing website that we can keep and maintain. So even after the plan's adopted, we can keep it and do something like this, an implementation section, where we can say, this is what we've done to implement the plan. This is where we're on the process. These are things that we're doing to implement the plan um, and things like that. And they also do um, updates here each quarter. They put a, um, a uh, flyer together that they put on here that shows pictures of the projects they've done to implement the plan. So that's pretty cool. And so that's something we're looking at doing in the future. We're, like I said, we're keeping ideas, but this one had a, a really great website. They, um, like I said, they won a, a national award for it. Let's see. And they had two different versions of their plan. They had the regular like kind of text version of their plan here, and then they had this other one that was a uh, an e-reader plan, which was kind of neat too. So I just want to kind of say, because you know, it's technology, and, and then you can go to the different topics here, and it has it summarized. So we were thinking about maybe doing something like this afterwards, and summarizing the big ideas and the main things that came out of each element in something like this that's easier to read. You don't have to read the full document, and it's just user friendly. So that's what we're looking at when we're working with IT. We already have the, the domain. So by your next meeting in January, which is at the end of January, we're hoping to have it basically complete and ready to launch in February. We'll have all the survey questions. We'll have that. We're creating flyers to uh, post around town, different bulletin boards that we can hand out to that tell people about the general plan, what it is, what it is, what it doesn't do, and our website and an email address. The email address would be like info at planprescott.com or we look at howdy at planprescott.com or something like that. So we're trying to make it fun and informative, but we want to make sure the website's really user friendly and easy for people to get the information and see where we are in the process and to get to the surveys and anything other information we have. So we will have that in January. We'll, we'll take input and it's something that staff can easily update to. So we can add more information and we can change things on the website and we're working really closely with IT with that. So we wanted to share that with you. And that's all I have about that. Any questions of staff? Question. Jim? Uh, yes, I have a question. <clears throat> Could you send that link? And also, do we have a proposed site if we have a community get together to look at things? Is there a proposed site to do that? Well, with the open houses, we're looking at big forums, probably the um, out close by the airport. We're looking around town. Uh, we did one recently for the um, Sundog Connector at East Spire Sports. That kind of worked pretty good. It was a nice meeting space. So we're looking at four places around town. The survey function we're going to do is uh, it's called uh, 
survey one, two, three, it's through the GIS. The county used it, Chino Valley used it too, but it can geolocate where people are so they can put their address in and we can see where all the answers are coming from from the surveys and we can see what neighborhoods or areas that we aren't hearing from so we can reach out or do a meeting out there. So these are things that we're, gonna, we're looking at. We look at different survey options. That seems to be the best and the cheapest because it comes with the GIS and then I can have the GIS help me with that. And it also comes with a really good report. So when we're done, we get this really analyzed report and different, they create all the charts, it does everything for you once you get that done. So easier for staff and easier to get into the plan and show all that information. So we can have that as part of the, the report at the end, the plan. That's good. Tammy. Mary Fredrickson, uh, can you tell me again what the domain name for our website is? Planprescott.com. It's not live yet. Um, we are just got the name uh, secured for that. Thank you. But I will have it at the next meeting and um, if it's still in the staging phase or not, but I will have something to show you what it's going to look like and kind of information we're put, putting on it right now. Thank you. You're welcome. Ralph, you had a question? Uh, yes. Is there a, since this is going to be a standalone since this is going to be a standalone um, website, is there going to be a hyperlink in the city website so that if you, people who go to the city website will be able to just jump to this, to our website? Yeah, on the, um, let's see. On the main website, we have uh, these boxes. And one of these we're looking at possibly having as the uh, general plan update or somewhere else on this page. So it'll be on the front page. I've already talked to uh, IT about that. We may just create another one of these boxes or use one that we don't need anymore. Um, that might not be important. And then uh, we can put it there. So we do that. We've already talked with them about that. We definitely want the link from the city website. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Rod, do you have any questions? No, thank you. James? Nope. Oh, this. Deborah. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, so the, just want to make sure I heard this right, the survey is going live in February? That's our goal. So we're, And will we, will the general plan committee have any input into that? Yes. And yes. when will that be? Well, it went in January, that was our next meeting, so I'll okay. be sending everything out. That's why I've been, if you guys have sur possible survey questions, please continue sending them to me. Um, but we also have another group with city representatives on it. From um, We have representatives from all the different departments in the city for another committee that um, for this too. So they're also providing me survey questions. So uh, we're breaking them up by different categories like open space or transportation, land use. So on the website, when we do the surveys, if someone just wants to open open space questions, they can just do that. Or if they just want to do transportation, or they can do all of them. So, um, but then at the open houses, we'll have more open meetings where people can actually write stuff out. So that's where we'll ask for like that kind of information. James. So these other websites that you looked at, were the communities large enough that they had all the other elements that we'll be adding in their plans? Or were they smaller, under 50,000? Uh, Flagstaff, well, because they're doing it with the Coconino County, um, you know, I'm not sure exactly about their elements because they haven't got that stuff up yet. They're still doing their outreach right now. So um, last I looked. Yeah, they are over 50, so they will. But they'll also have the elements required with the general for counties, which are less. So they only require six elements. We have, the cities have more required. So, and it's a kind of a different animal because it's joint between the county and city. But they have to have at least the main elements that's required for that, but they can expand like we can. Any other questions? Any questions from the public? I, uh, when I broached this topic on KYCA two Mondays ago, one of the callers came in and called in and, and complimented the Chino website. That was the first one you put up, and it was, it was pretty brilliant. Mm -hmm. Very user friendly, and they're showing a lot of information on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, if not, we'll move on to discussion of initial committee outreach. And um, years ago, I came across the phrase, all cards face up. 
I kind of like that phrase. So in the spirit of all cards face up, I'd like to make a few comments, and then uh, I'll open it up for a discussion among the committee members. Um, I think it's fair to say that this general plan has got off on the wrong foot. Um, and that's not the fault of anyone in this room. Uh, but my suggestion is let's move on, but with some changes. Now, some of you have expressed some concerns about uh, the way we started. And if I understand those concerns correctly, they are this idea of defining roles and responsibilities, having agendas, uh, determining plan elements, form subcommittees, and the discussion of uh, subject matter experts, and finally, the discussion of an independent facilitator. So what I'd like to do is take a few minutes and address those uh, elements. Um, in terms of roles and responsibilities, I also had the same concern. But the city has adjusted, and now uh, they've appointed me the chair of the committee, and Terry Sapio is the, is the sub-chair. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about roles and responsibilities before we even have the website. We're going to talk about it today. Um, and I'd like to move on to plan elements. In, uh, when Arizona in 1998 passed House Bill 2294, it said you had to have a general plan. It also outlined the process that you need to follow. And there are elements that you'll see in a in a very short PowerPoint presentation I have in a couple of minutes. There are elements to that process. Um, that's not to say that those are all the elements. And, I, and, and in this PowerPoint, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we get some customer or resident input. Um, now, on the subject of subcommittees, if we have a subcommittee, we have to notify the public. So one way as we grow and, and uh, move on is that if there's a month where we don't have a complete meeting, we can have a subcommittee meeting. So we can accommodate subcommittees, but there's a lot of work to do in that and it's at a lot of scheduling. Um, we, today we had an agenda. All meetings will have agendas and we'll have minutes from the previous meetings. That's, uh, you saw all the October minutes. Um, the, the plan elements will evolve as we progress. Um, as, but as I mentioned, a lot of them are covered in, in uh, House Bill 2294. Um, we always will incorporate subject matter experts. So when a time comes to, uh, to address an element, we will in, uh, entertain anyone that can give us a better insight on how to pursue that. Now, on the subject of independent facilitators, I mentioned that 2294 says we need to do a general plan. It also lays out a process that we need to follow. And an independent facilitator won't be familiar with that process. Now, in the world of negotiation, a good negotiation is where you win some and you concede some others. And I think that our two best facilitators are sitting in this room with George and Tammy. Now, although the state sets forth the elements, we would be remiss not to develop a process that ensures we reach out to the public to know what their objectives are. Uh, I think it, it accomplishes two things, and it gives the staff some time to get work on the website and get up to, up to speed come January and February. I think the public needs to know that we're working on this. And uh, as I mentioned, I reached out, uh, I was on KYCA two Mondays ago and uh, at the uh, Frontier Rotary yesterday. Now there's a lot of community groups and, and I'm not a member of all of them, but I'm assuming that many of you are. And um, so one thing we need to do is get the public know that we're working on it because they may or may not visit the city website. But if you reach out, Instead of expecting them to reach into us, we reach out to them. And also solicit their input to make sure that we're not missing anything. Therefore, to test the concept, I've developed a short presentation that I have um, went through at KYCA and also uh, at Frontier Rotary, and I'd like to share that with you if we can. 
So this is a presentation that I cobbled together. I think it's 10 or 11 slides, and it's for your use. We'll talk about how we're going to use it a little bit later. And you can modify it to, to accommodate your personality. First one introduces the general plan, and then I, uh, then I take a quote from Thomas Jefferson, where he's basically saying, just don't rely on the government. You citizens need to get involved. If you go to the next slide, it talks, this says the general plan does not have the effect of law. Simply stated, the general plan is an expression of the community's preferred future. But we do vote on the general plan. We voted on the 2015 general plan. So I, this is gone without me? No. Oh. So I think it's important that we get as much community involvement as necessary so when uh, other commissions, boards, and councils come to make decisions, it's a, it's a good reference document. Okay, so this is House Bill 2294. It's Growing Smarter Act. And the purpose of Growing Smarter Act was to assist uh, communities in developing strategies for dealing with population growth. And Lord knows we have to deal with population growth. The growing Smarter and Growing uh, Legislation requires cities and towns to adopt a, gener a general plan uh, provisions being water and regional integration. Can we go to the next slide? So these are the elements that I mentioned earlier that we need to cover, but they may not be all the elements. Can we go to the next slide? And, if, if we're, and we're knocking on the door of 50,000 people, so these are the other ones that kick in. We can go to the next slide. Now, those elements can be translated into agendas. For example, it might turn out to people are concerned about climate or traffic or roads. We always talk about water here in Prescott. Uh, and tomorrow we'll be talking about the airport again. Uh, and as I think Councilman Shiska used to say, last person in, close the door. We're always concerned about the growth in Prescott, affordable housing, public transportation. So if you go to the next slide. So the, the idea here is to take this presentation and reach out to the community, like the Rotary, or the Qantas, the Lions, the churches. And if you can go to the next slide, with two questions. What issues are important to you? An open-ended question that doesn't constrain you to the elements in HB 2294. And how do we realize them? And an example I use from the Planning Commission is <clears throat> we always talk about affordable housing, but just about every time some developer comes to the Planning Commission with something that vaguely resembles affordable housing, the local residents come out in arms and say, not my neighborhood. So the second question is, how do we realize that? On KYCA, there was a caller called in and said, we need public transportation. Okay, so does, that, does that mean we run a bus from PV to Prescott, and, or is every taxpayer willing to pay an X amount of extra dollars to run that bus? And afterwards, I got a call from a resident who had an idea on how we might address that. So two questions are, what issues are important to you and how do we realize them? Again, it, I welcome you to modify the slides to, to reflect your personality, but I recommend that you change the last slide to your name and address so that we can collect this information and come back for the January meeting and present it to George and Tammy. So we'll see. We'll bounce it up against the elements. And if we're missing something, then we got then we've we got a gold mine. If if we're if they all conform to the elements, then we know we're working on the right stuff. So to do that, now earlier I mentioned subcommittees mean we need to notify. So we're not going to have subcommittees to do that. But what I'd like to do is ask for uh, a couple of people to head up uh, an effort to reach out to the community. Now, you can draft another committee member to help you. First, I'd like to start with uh, Jim. Would you be willing to Absolutely. take a chunk of this? So yes. Each, 
each of us here probably know community groups that either you're a member of, and you don't have to be a member of it. I, I remember presenting to the, the um, Frontier Rotary when Brendan was the president about Prescott Senior Softball. I wasn't a member at the time. It cost me, but... <laughs> yes, Ralph. Um, there were two different agendas that were there were two different agendas that were published, I, and I looked at the city website to see which one was on the city website to comply with the notices. And I think the I think the agenda item you referenced was on the old agenda, and the, I think the current agenda is that subsequent to the or after we were discussing the website, we were gonna discuss committee organization and functions. And outreach. I think that was on the old one. Uh, that's the latest one that I have. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But anyway, back to... Well, well, that was what was on Tammy's email to us this morning. But if you look out at the city website... It's not there. No, mm -hmm. it, what it says is we're going to have a discussion of committee organization and functions. Okay. If yeah. I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes, you may. There was an amended agenda submitted out. It does say committee organization and function. Outreach is a committee function. Thank you. Discussing outreach as part of this is part of your discussion of what your functions are going to be. Oh, okay. Understood. All right. Uh, the other person I'd like to ask is Terry Sapio. Would you uh, jump in and, and take a chunk of the community? Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. All right. Uh, the one, uh, one person that's not here that I wanted to ask, because I, he's uh, very interested in youth input, is Carmen. But I'll, I'll get a hold of him somehow. And, and the fourth person I'd like to ask, Mary, would you be willing to reach out to the community? Sure. Okay, so um, I'll ask the four of you to coordinate who's reaching out to who, and then, okay. and then collect your information and send it back to Tammy so we can have that for the January meeting. Now, you've got a short period of time. You've got Christmas in there. We're not going to reach everybody. Uh, it, like Frontier Rotary is dark, I think, for the rest of the month. So... Uh, um, Whatever you can get, get. Deborah. Yeah, I just have a question. Um, I don't have any objection to the, the committee that you're proposing, but going back to Ralph's point, um, do we need to have a discussion about committee function and organization before we jump into this? Well, this is not a committee. We're going to. We're I'm going talking to about the general plan committee. That was what was on the agenda a discussion of committee organization and function. And it seems like we've. N gone through blown past any kind of collaborative discussion and we're now going into to some process which i don't have an objection to but i'm just wondering when the next part of the discussion is going to happen we're, we're going to talk about subcommittees and plans next year remember we were not going to have a meeting this month but we have so let's use that, uh, what I'm suggesting is we use that time to get some customer, or not customer, going back to my corporate days, uh, resident input to let them know that we're working on the general plan and uh, is there anything out there that we might miss if we just followed the process. So we're not gonna talk about committee function today? Not today. That's on the agenda. This is, we are a general plan committee, and we're talking about that function, sure. not we, subcommittees. We, we did amend the agenda to allow a discussion of the committee's organization and function. So there is an agenda item to allow discussion. Obviously, as chair, you, you get to manage that discussion. But if there are questions of the committee, it may benefit you to allow some interaction right now to find out if there are particular recommendations on, on the organization of the committee. I, I had mentioned earlier that I wanted to say a few comments and then I'll open it up for discussion. So right. if you have a discussion on that, let's hear it.
Is there a clerk here taking minutes? Yeah, I wanted to um, get on the record the information that several of us had put together and provided to our council liaisons about some of the ideas we have that include how the agenda is going to be set, um, a discussion among this group about what plan elements we think might be included, um, and also some provisions for education. So I'm going to just send this around. Are these your ideas? Mr. Chair, just to elaborate a little bit, um, a group of us uh, started talking offline, and just to, to assure the attorney, we did not have a quorum. Um, we want this to be as collaborative a, po a process as possible. So I do like the idea of going out and doing some outreach to the community. But by the same token, sitting up here, I have ideas that I thought we would be discussing. It seems to me that having at least a skeleton outline of what some of the ideas are for optional elements, some of the things we feel are missing. If you look at the Flagstaff website that Tammy put up, and I do encourage everybody to look at that because it's very well done. They did a SWOT analysis, and I think, Mr. Chair, that's what you're attempting to do as part of this outreach. But I think we need to be discussing strengths and weaknesses of the existing plan as a committee here to kind of give a foundation and to give some assistance to people that are going out and talking to others. I don't know what you think. I don't know what Mary thinks. I don't know what Terry thinks. And we haven't had those discussions. Um, the other thing that I think we feel is important is some education uh, about some of the critical issues in the community. Um, AVO is a great example. I watch as much of the Planning Commission as I can watch. <laughs> um, I don't always watch all of it, and while I hate to make staff do the exercise of presenting to yet another group, I think there's some things going on in the city that would be beneficial for all of us to hear. Um, and then we, we definitely uh, had some conversations about how the agendas are going to be set for these meetings and, and how the committee can play an open role in front of the public to be able to contribute to what needs to be on the agendas. So that's my short summary. Um, Gary Warab, myself, Rod, and Ralph um, Hess also um, put this together, so they may want to comment additionally, but I did want to get it into the record that there's been some thinking and not to, to, to have it as a mystery, but to put it out there for everybody to be aware of it. Thank you. Ralph, do you have any comments? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, yeah, what was a concern of mine was to make sure that there was some organizational structure that we seemed to not have established. Uh, and my focus was on what you touched upon earlier a little bit, is uh, the agenda and the c committee members being able to uh, pursue, uh, be able to get items on the agenda. Uh, sometimes we were able to do so if we contacted staff, staff would put it on. On other occasions, staff would not put the particular agenda item on. So I looked at uh, Robert's Rules of Order, uh, again, to uh, see what happens with committees and how do you set the agenda. And generally what they do, it's going to be unlike what we do because we're bound by the uh, open meeting laws. And so uh, under, under Robert's Rules of Order, the committee would approve an agenda, usually at the beginning of the meeting. But uh, to adapt that to what we have, my suggestion, as you'll see in the notes here that were provided to you by Deborah, is let's go ahead and add to the uh, agendas that we have a uh, final item that says uh, agenda topics for the next meeting. And we could address just the topics, not the substance of the topics, just the idea of what would be on a next agenda so that we as a committee could decide what, as a majority of us, would actually feel should be on the next agenda so we can discuss things that are coming up during the course of uh, our meetings. And uh, 
relating to what you were discussing earlier, I've had groups reach out to me already. So I've had people contact me. And so it would be helpful for us to discuss as a committee, what is it, what is it that we want on an agenda? And then decide as a committee, what are we gonna have on the next agenda? It would not be just committee members. We would rely on staff and public rely on other committee members to collaborate to present um, uh, an agenda that's going to be of interest and importance to staff, committee, and the public. So that was, that was my primary focus, because I think a lot of these ideas that Deb has presented to you uh, could be addressed just by making sure committee members, the public, and staff all have input on what our agendas are gonna be. And I had, do have a question though for the attorney. What, uh, we met, the four of us that Deb described, met with our liaisons to discuss this concern that we had. And when it came up, the question that came up for me is, uh, what is the role of liaisons with the committee? If there's, because we were talking about including Ted in that meeting and, and inviting him to that meeting, the chair to the meeting, uh, but we were concerned that if the liaisons are considered uh, ex officio members of the committee and we had seven people in the meeting, that would be more than half of 13. So uh, if, if that situation arises again, uh, what, what's the situation there? Yeah, let me address that, and for the record, Joseph Young, city attorney. The role of the council liaisons is not one as a member, so it, doesn't, it wouldn't count in terms of uh, establishing a quorum. Uh, it, the role is to communicate with council the different needs and progress of this committee. So that's the essential role, and to help facilitate staff, given their role as, as a, a supervisory role, uh, different needs as well. It doesn't raise the specter of open meeting law violation in terms of establishing a quorum. It, it, you do bring up a little bit of a point uh, when I was thinking a little bit. We talked about subcommittees are subject to the open meeting law to the same extent as this committee. Uh, there's also, it was brought up kind of vaguely in a previous meeting, but there's also the idea of a, a smaller group meeting if it's meeting consistently, that could raise the specter of open meeting law considerations, even if it doesn't have a quorum. And that goes back to kind of the purpose, and I don't want to overstate that um, because the line there isn't clear, but what is clear in the law is that government business should happen in the open. And so if there was a group, smaller group, three or four or five, or I guess six would be a quorum or seven, but three or four or five members that consistently meet to discuss the ongoing business of the general plan committee, that could raise the specter of open meeting law. And so it's something to keep in mind as well. The, but the liaisons are not problematic in that respect. Okay. Is that? Yeah, in this instance, it would, yeah, this is not an ongoing group. Yeah, and, but, and it, I, but, but you raise a, uh, another question that I had. If in lieu of a subcommittee, you have a focus group that says, well, let's work on uh, one of the elements uh, because they're of interest to each one of us. Uh, but it's not a subcommittee. Do you now, and you're doing research, not necessarily promoting solutions, well, you're gonna probably promote solutions. So you end up doing research, comparing other plans, doing that with regard to the element that is of interest to this focus group. Is that gonna be a problem? Possibly. Okay. Uh, but it also depends. And if it's, if, if you, as a member of the committee, want to discuss roads and have some people in mind to discuss roads that aren't also a part of this committee and have a, a meeting or a focus group with kind of interested parties, that does, is not problematic, open meeting. But if you and three other people um, decide that you want to establish the roads focus group, then it's just a subcommittee by another name and it would be problematic. All right. So, uh, Joe, while you're up there, I, th I think 
just so I understand what Ralph was saying, I'm going to try to restate it. The, the efforts that we're talking about, whether the one I suggested in that PowerPoint or, or Ralph's focus groups, are meetings with the public. Right, which, right. Is, which is okay. As yeah. individual members, that, that's fine. Right. Okay. And that's part of your role. Okay, thank you. Now, Ralph had another question about uh, setting the agenda, and I was wondering, George, you wanna, you, what are your thoughts on that? I was, gonna, I was just asked by council liaison whether that's something that's legal. I'll let George talk about whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. It's, a, it's legal to do that, to discuss possible topics, but not to get into the depth of that. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I, what he said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's not uncommon for, at the end of a long discussion, because some of your discussions are going to get long, about particular topics that you ask for specific things to be put on the next agenda. That's a discussion that you can have amongst yourselves and items can be put on an agenda by a consensus or if a vote's necessary by vote. Okay. Any other comments? Jim, James, Gary, Rod. Um, I did hear a, a key word in, in our attorney's discussion with us about uh, small groups, and that was ongoing. So is that is that really a key to the issue? I want to get an understanding of, of what you're asking. Well, uh, if th this group of four of us that met with our council liaisons, right. we were four members of the committee, but that was not an ongoing repeating meeting. That was a one-time thing. Yeah, so. it, and I, I don't have a problem with that. And the line here is not clear when it comes to groups smaller than a, than a quorum yeah. or a formal subcommittee. Those, the, the rules when it comes to formal subcommittees or ongoing meetings is, or where there's a meeting of a quorum, that's clear. Where the line is drawn for a smaller group discussing items is, is unclear. But I, I just want to bring to mind the purpose of the open meeting line to remember that. But if there was four who met regularly to discuss kind of the ongoing, even though it's not a quorum, it that does be become problematic. problematic. Yeah, if I can clarify for myself. Yeah. So what, uh, let's say three of us were interested in uh, environmental issues. And so mm -hmm. we were going to look at uh, th three different, uh, different plans and then come back and each, each of the three, we're going to select one plan, come back and talk about the comparisons. To me, from what you're describing, that would sound like uh, open meeting issues because of the fact that uh, we'd be basically doing city business among ourselves. It, you're right. It could okay. be problematic. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. Mary, any uh, comments, thoughts? No, I don't have anything to add right now. Any comments from the public? Mr. Chairman, just, just one comment. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen this list. I responded back to the two liaison council members regarding this. I, I think a list like this is a topic that should be discussed in the committee and not bypass the committee to try and move it forward some other process. This belongs as a discussion item amongst the whole committee. If, if you want us to have these items listed out um, as particular discussion items for future meetings, we can certainly do that for you. But there are 11 of you on this committee, not four, and 11 of you should decide what to talk about with liaisons just my professional opinion based on two prior general plan committees that I dealt with here. <laughs> if I can respond to that. Go ahead, Ralph. Yeah, that was the idea of putting it on today's agenda, was to put this thing before the entire 11. And in fact, when we met with the liaisons, we told them this is something that should be decided by, or we suggested, we didn't tell them, we, we offered that this is something to be addressed by the entire committee. Our, our whole uh, focus 
was a collaboration among all the committee members, all the, liais the li liaisons and staff and the public. Mm. It was not to say, this is what should be done because the four of us had these concerns that we discussed. Understood, but you, you've listed concerns, but you've also listed proposed answers to those, and, and maybe that's what should be discussed right now. Your proposed follow-up on the list of questions. Honestly, we, we want to cooperate. A big part of our job from the staff perspective is there's two things. W one is to support the committee's actions because we have technical knowledge and we also have a lot of access to other technical information that you're going to need during the process. Absolutely. The other is to kind of nag you as necessary to keep the process moving so that we comply with state law requirements. I and mean, those are, again, our job is to ensure that we comply with state law in the process. So having that discussion and having us have an idea of what it is you're looking for out of the process will help us. Okay, yeah, so why, why don't we go through these? Well, one thing I wanted to say is, um, yeah, that, that's exactly right. And, and in that context, uh, I look forward to collaboration and reciprocal nagging. So, I'm sorry, I missed that. Reciprocal what? Nagging. 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 Oh, nagging. We can, <laughs> nag, we can nag each other. <clears throat> yeah. After 22 years here, I've been nagged enough. <laughs> yeah, me too. Councilman Moore. Thank you, Ted. Um, I just want to clarify from uh, Councilman Montoya, as in my perspective, we were approached by these four members with these concerns, and um, Brandon and I, of course, discussed these concerns amongst ourselves, and he asked me if I would take the lead in um, consolidating those concerns into an email. So uh, last week, after we met with these four committee members, I wrote an email and I included the city attorney, the mayor, the town manager, um, and I tried to, you know, make everybody aware of these concerns. I included Tammy and, and uh, George in it. And so, you know, we certainly wanted to make it uh, available, this information available to everybody that was going to interface and interact with the committee. Uh, and I think what you're proposing is exactly right. Let's discuss it as a committee. That's the right direction. Thank you. Okay. So <clears throat> there are Seven items, is that right, Deborah? Do I have that right? Seven items on your list? You're asking me to count. I can write, but I can't well, I count. I can see it says one through seven, but I just wanted to confirm. Yeah. Looks like seven to me. Okay. Yeah, yeah they're not numbered. Okay. Let, let's, let, let's go through these. The, the first one was to find staff role and committee roles. Um, I think... We've done a little bit of that today. I want to ask your thoughts. We did a little bit of that today, and a lot of that comes next year uh, when, when staff gets up to speed on how this process rolls out. Are there any other issues concerning that that are still immediate? Ralph, Rod, Deborah? Chairman, I just want to make two announcements. One, I did not intend to speak today. And two, <laughs> two, two is that it, it would help us if you told us what you thought our role is. Tell us. What do you think staff's role should be in this process? Now, we, we may or may not agree, and, and I'm not terribly adverse to arguing if I think I'm right on something, but at the same time, hearing from you as to what you expect of us can help us provide it to you. Well, I, if, if, if I may uh, make a comment, I think, I think uh, what I heard in the first couple of meetings and felt myself um, is that this process should be more collaborative. Uh, I may be speaking out of term here, but, but um, you know, just because they passed a law in 1998 that said House Bill 2294 says you have to general plan, you can just go through the check. You can check all the boxes and say, hey, look at that. We got a website. We got a general plan. Uh, I think we have the opportunity here as the general plan committee uh, 
review committee uh, to make a difference. And that means a little more interactive than maybe it's been before. I, I remember the mayor at the first meeting asked us, how many have read the 2015 general plan? A few hands went up, and he's, he said he was surprised because uh, many of the 2015 general plan members hadn't read the 2015 general plan. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I wasn't around in 2015, so I can't, can't talk about the process. But it's easy for the process to be a checkbox. We go through these elements outlined in HB 2294, and we, we got a general plan. I think we have a, a lot of talent here at this general plan, and I think what everyone's looking for is more collaborative, not just checking the boxes, but, hey, I got an issue, or I talked to uh, the Kiwanis, and they got an issue, or I talked to the church. So I, th we're going to be open for that. And, uh, and if those are agenda items, then we'll put them down as agenda items. Councilman uh, Montoya has a comment, question. Just a, quickly, we, we completely agree with that. I, I have done three general plans, two in Arizona here for this city. A lot of communities in Arizona don't create committees. They hire a consultant or the Planning and Zoning Commission is their committee. And I think we do better plans because we have a committee that has, I'm not sure if this is going to sound right, fingers into the community. You, you yes. provide multiple contacts into the community that you don't get if you hire a consultant from outside. Right. That consultant's going to hold two public meetings like Chino Valley's doing, not for this coming year and then more after that. We rely on the committee to provide us input from that process. We're all about having a committee and all about interactive process. But to be fair in that process, we have a stake in it as well. The city's staff will ultimately be the primary arm to implement the general plan, not just the planning staff, but city staff. So we're going to participate in the discussions. It's not a matter of us imposing on you or you imposing on us. Neither of those are going to work. It has to be collaborative. And I like hearing the word collaborative. I've heard it several times today. That's how we've done it the last two times, and it's been successful the last two times. Very high approval rating when it gets to the voters. It, was and it I 70, 65 percent? Uh, 80 and oh, 80 percent higher than that for one of them. 85, I believe, for one. I'm sorry, it's been a long time ago on that one. The, the the average across the state is more like in the 60 percent range for approvals. So we, we've done that. And I think a lot of the reason why it gets such a good approval rating is that the public trusts that they're being represented in it, even if they never read the plan, because they know they're citizens who have participated in developing the plan. Committee is an important part to get that high rating from the voters when we finally go to the voters. I apologize. That was Councilman Montoya. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just want to say, from my perspective as a member of council, uh, I, I look at this committee a lot like I look at a committee like planning and zoning or um, you know, the preservation committee or other. You guys are a vetting process for council in some ways. And that's, that's, but, but you are even above that in some ways because you're part of this process. I think George is right, collaboration, when I had, the, when Councilman Moore and I had that meeting with the four members of the committee, my sense was that what everyone wants, and when I say everyone, I think everyone on this committee, all the members of community development, staff, the mayor, I'm sure, is, is on board with this as well. Collaboration is a big part of this. You know, um, I think what Ted was talking to, you each have your spheres of influence within this community. And I would suggest that we have a diverse enough group on this committee that those spheres don't have 100% overlap. And so that's a really unique opportunity for you to solicit and get a lot of different feedback. And I plan on being part of this process too. I, I can't speak for Councilman Moore, but I know that I will solicit feedback from members of the community too, because I think that does make for a stronger general plan. And so I, I guess to answer the idea of, of staff's role, I, I guess 
I don't have the expectation, and I would say that if anyone on this committee has this expectation that they should reconsider it, that you folks are going to be putting pen to paper to write the general plan. I think that's too much to ask of you as a committee. Um, and it's unwieldy for you guys to do that. And so I think that's a, a de defined role where staff can, you know, you've got George here who's done this a, f a number of times. You've got Tammy who's done it uh, uh, once with the county as well. So they know the nuts and bolts of getting that piece done. So rely on them to do that work. Now that doesn't mean that they just run amok and say, here's what we're putting into the general plan. It is a collaborative process where I think a lot of fact finding has to happen. And that's what I would love to see you guys implement as a liaison is do that fact finding, engage in it. As you do that fact finding, go back to your neighborhood and talk to the people in your neighborhood and say, hey, we talked about this at the general plan in terms of traffic. You know, listen to the subject matter experts. There are a lot of them and not all of them, I would suggest, work in the city. You know, you have Central, you have Pi Metropolitan Planning Organization, SIMPO, that does a lot of traffic study work in the region. And so that's someone that you probably need to have come, have Vinny Gallegos come here and talk to you about what the overlying regional traffic plan looks like. You know, public transportation, he has thoughts on those. His thoughts aren't necessarily supreme, but there are thoughts. So I would just say, I, I wanna echo the idea, Collaboration is a big piece of this for me as I see it. And each of you were put on this committee by a member of council. And so to that extent, you're an extension of the will of council a little bit. So I would say, I look at your role as the same in, as council operates, which is you guys are the big picture, the 30,000 foot view, the policy piece, and staff gets into the nitty gritty and defines that policy. And as, as you, maybe think that's not exactly where we were going with this, you can then say, hey, George, Tammy, come and explain this to me so I understand what this means because this doesn't sound like what I thought it sounded like. And then you can hash it out. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's, that's my vision for how this committee should operate. And again, I would echo George and, and Ted's idea. Collaboration is a big piece of this. Thank you, Councilman Montoya. Terry? May, may I make one follow-up? First of all, thank you. I thought that, you weren't going to talk today. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still not. Um, that, that was an excellent description. W one of the things that, that we can do for you is, first of all, if staff does the typing rather than all of you doing the typing, it's going to be consistent. The look of it, the format of it will all be consistent. But a key part of what Councilman Montoya just said is the vetting part nothing will end up in the draft plan that goes to the Planning Commission for their part of the review without this committee voting on it. You're gonna vote at the end before we send anything forward. And it's gonna be individual votes along the way too. So when we find that we've, maybe we're finished with transportation element, the circulation element, because we've covered everything we need to cover. You guys have to agree that you're finished with it at right. that point. So there's going to be a lot of you reading stuff we typed. Terry? Yes, I just wanted to add a little bit to what Councilman Montoya and George had to say. Um, I agree with what you're saying. And what we're here for is to get input from the community. For example, we have Rich Kaplan and his wife Sharon in the audience from Yavapai Hills Sundog Connector Committee. And our job is to listen to the residents of Prescott and incorporate what they want into this. Our job is, as committee members is not to write the general plan. In fact, the name of this committee is not the general plan committee. It's not the general plan writing committee is the General Plan Review Committee. That's the official title of this committee, it's the General Plan Review Committee. And we have city staff that has experience in writing these kinds of plans, and I think we need to allow them to do their job, and we need to work with them. And so, once again, this word collaboration comes up where we work with the city staff, we don't work in conflict with the city staff. And the goal, from what I see, is that all of us, whether we're on the committee or city staff or city council, is to come up with a general plan 
that re reflects the wishes of the people that live in Prescott. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments? I, I would, uh, what I'd like to do, if, if you're in agreement, hey, Deborah, one second, is go through these seven items that you have on the list, see if we've addressed some of them today, and if we've not, then we'll, we'll, dis we'll discuss those. Go ahead, Deborah. No, I just wanted to, to say, um, if this has somehow given the impression that this committee should be writing the plan, that was not the intention. And I'm glad staff is gonna be writing the plan. What, I'm, what I think this can all be coalesced into is, a little, is really two points. One is an agenda process that lets the committee in public and the public say, hey, we'd like to have you guys talk about this at some point. Mm -hmm. The other that I think we're missing is a framework. There's a lot of issues going on. We are contemplating, we know what the, the elements are that we have to have. We're also contemplating the going up to the 50,000 level, and that brings in a whole bunch of other elements. For example, the public facilities element. It seems to me if we start scheduling, okay, public facilities, police, fire, do we have, do we need a substation somewhere? What? The staff knows the answers to these things, and I think if we're able to, to agendize some of the topics following the state law framework, plus at least survey the committee and get our thoughts on what the optional elements might be, Example, again, we had a long discussion about implementation element. I've done a bunch of research on that. Um, I have opinions, I'm not gonna be shy, but I think other people have things they're interested in that might be optional, and it should be aired, it should be agendized and aired so the public can speak and committee members can speak. Last, what I, I, um, I wanna throw out there is, if we don't have a, a a format and, and a predictable agenda like, you know, this month we're gonna talk about X, next month we're gonna talk about Y. We're gonna keep regurgitating these same conversations. So that's the gist of a lot of this, is let's come up with a framework. And I would propose, you know, we've gotta talk, we can talk about the elements we have to do, but the new stuff is what do we have to do as a community of 50,000? And let's start getting that on the agenda to talk about. And what are the optional elements? That's the new stuff outside of what we've normally had to do. The last thing is, I'm recognizing the public records, uh, public um, open meetings law, have put some constraints on the committee, but is there a way, and I don't know what it is, for members to pursue things that they're interested in, and that may, they maybe want to dig deeper? and give feedback to staff. And maybe if it's two members that have the same interest, how do we how do we accomplish that? I don't know the answer, and I just wanna throw that out. I know Gary's mentioned often that he's in, interested in open space. That's his focus. Gary's interested in, what was it? Open space. Open space. Well, uh, we'll I'll ask staff to come up and talk of that, but, but I'll go back to a question that um, Ralph had brought up earlier. If you're going to the public as an individual, like you're gonna to go to some community group, uh, that, that's open. It's not you and Jim and James and Terry having a meeting. Uh, I don't see any reservations about going to anybody and asking input, and, and that's why I opened this meeting with the solicitation of that idea, uh, because if we don't, if we're not proactive at the beginning, we can fall prey to the checkbox. We'll just check all these things we have to do, and then we got a general plan. Uh, I think we got smart enough people in this group, and if there's a historian out there somewhere, what was the name of Lincoln's cabinet? The team of rivals. The team of rivals. I think we have replicated, I think we've replicated Lincoln's uh, cabinet in, in this uh, general plan, which is good. That means, we're not going to just check boxes. We're going to have debates and arguments, and, and that's fine, as long as we remain civil. So uh, did I understand you to say you've boiled these seven down into those couple points? I, I, I don't want to leave the meeting without saying, have we either addressed these points, or do you see progress on the points? I think we need to, to as a committee, uh, talk about how we're going to agendize items. And I don't know that we've discussed that as a committee. And I think we need to talk about the framework of how we're gonna move forward with discussions, and I don't think we've talked about that. 
uh, we have, I'm going to let staff answer, but on the second point, uh, Tammy has a schedule uh, of what things we need to do when. So, George, you want to talk to that? We have a rough schedule that we've been using to just try and figure out if, how long it's going to take us to get this done. Obviously, and I apologize, my voice is disappearing. Maybe I won't be talking at this meeting. We can, we can solidify that a little better to give you bones to start with and work out timing. We did it based on when we have to go to um, the, the city clerk to put things on a ballot in order to meet the time deadline. So we work backwards from that date to figure out when we have to have things done. It's not specific about element two has to be done on such and such a date. It's not like that. But we can get that to you for your next agenda as part of your discussion if that seems to be something you think will help plan that out. One of the problems you're going to have is if you schedule too tightly, you're going to break your schedule at the first meeting because the cabinet of rivals approach, which actually works for the committee pretty well, you're going to find that something takes longer than you thought it was going to take. Yeah. The discussion's not going to get through the whole thing. You're going to have two meeting discussions rather than one meeting discussion. So the, the plan to move it forward that Deb's talking about, I think needs to be something that's rough and flexible that shows progress and not tied to a number of items on particular meeting agendas. Um, I also think that based on the, the question that, that was initially asked, that having a request to put something on an, an a, a future agenda and having the committee agree to it, even just by consensus, no one objects, that's a consensus yes, uh, is something that committees have well established and have used forever. So I think there may already be a process for you to ask for things to be put on agendas. The first question you asked was regarding whether or not as an individual you could pursue investigation into particular topics and bring information back to staff or to the committee. And, and I, I consulted quickly with the city attorney. There's absolutely no problem with individuals pursuing their interests and bringing information back to the committee. Um, I, I would recommend that if we want things addressed to the committee, that just to avoid the potential for open meeting all requirements, and this is something we tell every established board and committee, what you want on a, a included in distribution to the committee members needs to go through a staff person, and Tammy's your staff person. So if you do research and you want to distribute that research, it goes through staff to get distributed and we will send it to everybody. But having one of you send to another is not going to be um, something that staff supports just from the perspective of the potential for open meeting law violations because of it. And we do tell every single board and commission, you're nodding because you hear this from us once a year in the open meeting law uh, presentations. So pursuing things individually based on your interests and providing additional information, absolutely. So, so do we have, uh, are we have agreement on that point now? So we're going to, at the end of this meeting, provide input to items for the next meeting agenda. Yeah. I have one comment. Yeah, I want to thank George. Um, while you were uh, speaking about the collaboration, uh, a concept came to me just today that I uh, didn't really think about clearly when we were bringing this to the attention of the liaisons. And I think for me, I'm only speaking for me, my perception during the first few meetings was that collaboration between staff and the committee consisted of a passive form of uh, collaboration by the committee and an active form of communicate of uh, collaboration from staff and to me that was going to be inefficient and ineffective and so to to use the word collaborative in a sense that I think it's important for the committee to collaborate substantially substantively and staff collaborate substantively you are the planning professionals and we're going to be providing ideas that come from the community. And to do that effectively, 
uh, I think it has to be a two-way street of substantive collaboration. And, I, and it might have been intended all along, it's just that my perception during these first meetings is that was not the way it was gonna be. So George, I, I appreciate you, what you told, I, what you said, because I now understand that's the way. Uh, I, I just looked around to see who I'm going, if there's anyone here who might object to this. There, there, there was a, wow, I never run out of words. It was just. I, That's true. Yeah, it, it you, was don't a, have, you don't have to defend it because no, no. I'm saying it was just my perception. No, but but uh, I, I think your George, perception was George. Correct. If I may, your perception was the same as my perception. Yes. Okay. And 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 we we've had a number of discussions, and that's why I said we got off on the wrong foot. Mm -hmm. I think everybody agrees we got off on the wrong foot. And I also said that's not the fault of anybody in the room, and it's not the fault of anybody in the room. So we, the, the ship had some holes on it. We've plugged the holes. And I think now we're in a better going forward to know that it's not just us checking boxes on work that staff is doing. Uh, it's us coming up. And that's why I've asked you to go out to the community and solicit, you know, what, and, you know not, not just we ought to do this. But, you know, it's hard to, it's, it's easy to review. It's hard to create. Not only we ought to do this, how do we do it? Mm -hmm. I mean, because a lot of stuff that we're going to develop is going to go over to the Planning Commission. And an example I brought up earlier with the affordable housing, uh, well, how do we do affordable housing if, if the residents are going to come out every time? But, so. There is a lot of work that we can do. Uh, we weren't going to have this meeting, but we did. I'm glad we did because we've aired a lot of issues. This has been uh, good. And, and I think we've resolved some of them, and we have work in process to resolve the other ones. But I think the main one was it's not just from them to us as the first impression. It's now a, collab a truly collaborative effort, not just talk about a topic, but coming up with the topics. A dialogue, not a monologue, right? Well, yeah, that's a good phrase. You, you may have a few monologues because there are a lot of subject matter experts that you will see over the next year yeah. from various departments, and you, you're going to want to allow them to make presentations to you about their particular area of expertise. Do, do we have any more items that we need to discuss? Deborah says no. Ralph, do you have any? Rob? No. I, I think we just need to talk about the agenda for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, I, let me just, I, your, your framework, your PowerPoint was good. Because if we're going to be out approaching the public, uh, I think it would be good for us to have some kind of structure. And that was a nice presentation to, to give. Uh, was the city planning on suggesting any uh, items or agendas that we would uh, to, dis to use as a framework to discuss with the public. I know that our, looking at the, your implementation schedule, that's supposed to come up after the first of the year, where we're approach where we're out, our outreach starts. Correct, so um, come January, we're gonna have hopefully the website ready to launch in February. We'll have the surveys starting to get onto the website and get that ready. We'll have flyers available that you can take out as you're doing outreach too. They'll have the general plan website and the email address to send to. Um, if you're going out and using a presentation similar to um, Ted's, we do have a planning email that if people that you're willing to give out. So until we get the general plan email set, um, I can get that set probably in a couple of weeks with IT. But um, we do have a planning email right now that if you want to give out that email for people to send comments so it isn't going to you directly, it's actually coming to us, then you're welcome to give that out. It's the planning at prescott-az.gov. Uh, that brings me to ask a question. When I tried to send my PowerPoint as a PowerPoint, uh, it, it, it was rejected by every email address. And I'm thinking 11 pages is too big. Uh, how? Because on the PowerPoint, on the notes page, I have notes in there. You know, when you get to a slide, you, you say these words or your words. Uh, how could I get the true PowerPoint 
to the committee? You could probably bring it into us on a thumb drive, and then I can try to email it out. Okay. All right. That that should have gone through if it's only 11 pages. We email things filters. much larger than that all the time. Well, that's there's no you can see there's no animate. Well, that's a PDF, but there's no animation in it, and it bombed on oh. everyone. I mean, everyone I sent it to it bombed. Okay. So I'll bring it in on the thumb drive, then you can email it out, mm -hmm. and then you can incorporate Tammy's idea of that city email. Mm -hmm. that they can respond to. And we can also add on the uh, the city's planning, our, our uh, phone number too. Yeah. Or, or, or I could actually, I could probably just put mine on there since I'm the main contact, put my phone number so the calls will come directly to me. That way you guys are getting by. And then we're, we're starting to collect all that information. Okay. There's another way to do that also. Uh, most of us probably have access to some kind of cloud storage, whether it be Microsoft OneDrive or an Apple equivalent or, or Google Drive, you can put a file there and get a share link to it. We, we can't access that? You can't? No, we have too many filters in the city. Um, we uh, are not able to do that. So if he emails it to me, I mean, he brings it in as a PD uh, um, on the thumb drive, yeah. then I can, I'll email it out or we'll figure out how to get it out to you. I'll bring it in on a thumb drive for the planning meeting tomorrow. Okay. Oh, question. Uh, Tammy, can you repeat one more time the email address for planning? It's planning at prescott-az.gov. And is it at AT or at the, the symbol? It's the symbol. The symbol, okay. And then the new one will be, like I said, it's gonna, we're looking at whether we want to use info or Prescott. hello or even howdy at planprescott.com. So we're still filtering that out. So, um, but once we have that, it'll be on the flyer what our email is for, for the general plan and the website. But we are, the goal is in working with IT and me having after this week, hopefully some time to get it all together, to have that ready to implement and launch in February. And that will get us going on starting to get a public input, which it's hard to do, figure out what new elements to do until we hear from the public. So, but um, we'll be able to get all that started. But we all know how, we all know what topics have been hot topics discussed over the last year or two, um, or three actually, that we know that needs to be into the plan. And we, we are get, accumulating information. Like I said, I just got the, the official um, approved um, open space plan from Joe Baines that I could send out. Uh, Climus is still finishing up the climate study for that they're putting together. And we're hoping to have that probably We'll see the, the rough draft next week. So we'll have something for January to put on your agenda. Hopefully they'll have the final. So we'll have that information to send out to you. And we'll, we're still accumulating more plans. Um, Simpo's starting their um, um, the transit study. So we'll have Bryn come in and do a presentation next year in regards to that, because we know that's a hot topic too. And um, so I'm actually part of SIMPO. I'm on one of their advisory committees. So any questions, and I attend all the, the, the meetings, so I'm pretty well versed on what's going on with SIMPO. We also have other committees we're on to. We have uh, committees that we coordinate, coordinating transportation and land use, where we meet with the county and the surrounding cities with ADOT. Uh, state land, forest service, and we talk about projects coming forward and transportation. So we have a lot of information regionally um, that we participate in. So we have a lot of information to bring you. A lot, I am very heavily involved with SIMPO and transportation. I used to be with trails, but we have a trails person here that can come and talk about that. Um, but we, uh, I have all those people also on our other general plan work group. And I've already been discussing like them coming and talking when we get to those topics. When we're talking about a certain element, we're going to have someone come in and talk about what's going on with their departments. And they're all on board with that. Because this is a city plan, and we want to make sure all the city staff and all the departments are also collaborating with, it, with this. So we have, we have two groups I'm working with with the general plan to get input into and get survey questions. And we have the fire department and a representative from the police department too on that group. So when we start talking about public buildings and stuff like that, 
they do have ideas. And so I have representation already on our work group that can help provide information for that. So we are already got all this stuff going in, our, in the background. So, and we're ready, we're gonna be ready come January to start bringing you way more information. We've just been kind of busy with the AVO and other stuff on our side. And then six staff, um, there's a help too when we only have three planning staff. So, um, but we are gonna have a slowdown now so we could get kind of caught up. And we're gonna have a whole bunch of information starting January. And I do apologize that we weren't ready for this to get started when we did. But we do have a schedule kind of to keep everything going of how to keep all this going and get public input and keep everything in a timely manner. And we're always going to be sharing information when we get the survey and we start getting all the information. We're going to be sharing that with you at every meeting, what we're hearing from the public and what areas are we not hearing from. Then we can actually ask you, hey, do you guys know somebody in this area or, or a group that you can go to? Um, Last summer, we had an intern that would just graduate from high school who's very, who was very involved in the community, the teen effort in the area. And uh, we were drilling her, how can we reach out to the teens? How can we reach out to the, the community to get the youth uh, input? And she gave us some ideas. And um, we were going to be implementing that using the launch pad and things like that to get those indicts. So we have a lot of ideas, because we've been already been thinking about this for a year. But we just kind of, we're getting it all going and we're getting the timelines going. So we're going to have a lot better, I hope, collaboration starting in January with you guys. And, and that does bring up one last topic. I'm still not talking at this meeting. <laughs> we have to pace ourselves for two reasons. One, you can burn out. We can burn out. <laughs> But two, we also have a deadline. We have certain time frames we have to hit a final approval in order to make it onto a ballot so that we comply with state law. So we have two different types of pacing we need to look for. We have a deadline when we have to be done, but we don't want to turn the fire hose on with all the information and dump it on you and not be able to say, okay, here's the reason we gave it for you. The next step is we talk about the circulation element. We talk about the open space element and here's our open space experts. So again, part of the timing that we're gonna be pushing for is to make sure that the pacing allows you to keep up with the demand on you for response back to us. I can't give you 400 pages and expect a response back in a week. Also, as we're going through this, if you have information that you find or you have other ideas, please send them to me. If you're sending them to um, one of our liaisons, I might not be getting it, and then we don't know about it. But I'm, we are open to your input and your expertise and the information you find. If you find examples that you find from another general plan, we've looked through all over the country, I've been looking at general plans. so. <laughs> and so we've been looking at different formats and things that we can do. So as we start rewriting the plan, we want to add it into the new f a new format. So any pictures that you have that you think would be really good to have in the plan or even on the website or any information, please send them to me. I am the conduit for this. And anything that you want forwarded or included in the future agenda, send to me. And we will include them on it. I, we have no problems with that. Thank you, Tammy. Jim? Um, following up on your comments about, you know, reaching out to youth, how, how might that relate to these questions that we have here that Ted has presented? And, I mean, their inputs would be really important for this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm trying to understand, Ted, if we have modified what we're proposing here. Because as far as I'm concerned, anyone here can make a proposal for contacting people, you know, groups, whatever it is. Because I'm, you know, I've got a list here already, but uh, particularly that, because you probably have some feedback already, and I want to know how we can coalesce all of this together, you mm -hmm. know, rather than just repeating over and over. Yes. You know what I'm saying. Is that clear? Um, 
No. Okay. <laughs> I, I kind of have a, I kind of have an idea of what he's saying. I mean, some you have an idea. I have some ideas. Okay, so. then explain it to me, please. Okay. So the launch pad has a lot of collaboration and reaches out. So some things that we're going to do. We've already been talking with IT in regards to you know the website and stuff and surveys. We could think of other questions that we can just ask the youth. Um, some ideas that we had over the, over the summer was going to government classes. This is a form of government. You got local government. This is a process of local government. This is a guide that's, that's, that tells us how we, how we grow and such. So maybe us going to either creating a video that they can show at their classes and then have a survey or a link to a survey that they can do or have something they do in class. The survey is kind of easier because all of them have their smartphones and they can the SKU and everything. And um, the SKUs are very easy to create. Once you create a survey, you get this the little SKU, the square thing, um, which I haven't figured out how to use. So. Um, yeah, my phone doesn't do that. Um, <laughs> and uh, but those are ideas that we had in reaching and, we, and discussing it from somebody who is very involved with the youth. So we, she was giving us some ideas of how to reach out, um, and we're still comprising that. And as we flush it out a little more, we're, we'll reach out, bring it to an agenda for you guys to give input. Um, we want your guys' input, or if somebody wants to go to the classes or something to talk. Uh, we'll reach out to the school districts to get I. Uh, how to do it. So we, we want to go into the school, talk to the students, answer their questions. Um, but if you do that, it might be good to have a staff member there because we can kind of answer other questions they may have. But those are ideas that we've had at, in our discussions getting up to this point. And now we're starting to get it all scheduled out and everything and get to a point where we can start going out like that. But you guys going out and just getting these basic questions, it helps us create more survey questions that we can adjust and add later um, as we're getting more input from the community. You good? I'm good. Um, <laughs> which we're, okay. When you, you brought up uh, the youth, uh, which brings me to a question. Andre's not here, and, and he was one of the persons I wanted to have a lead, be a lead person because he's expressed that interest. Mm -hmm. Could you send him an email and ask him to call me because we don't have a phone number for him, right? Correct. I've sent I sent him an email, but I haven't heard anything from him. So would you do that? Sure. Okay. Any other comments? Concerns, uh, I, Councilman Montoya. I'm happy to be uh, I, to go and be part of the youth part of it too. Thank I have you. a 16-year-old daughter that I'd be more than happy to embarrass. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Councilman Moore, you're volunteering also. I love speaking engagements. <laughs> I do a lot. Of but does the audience love your speaking engagements? <laughs> 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 yes, Deborah. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we could put on the agenda staff for next the next meeting, if you think this is a good idea. I really would like your perspective on the elements that we're going to need to add when we get to 50,000. Just some background, how it might tie into what we already are doing today and what departments we might want to be talking to. If we could do that, I think that gives us some more information. Good idea. Anyone else? But just, but I think those elements are not, uh, they're, they're required. They haven't been required up to this point because we hadn't reached 50,000. I'm interested in the new ones. Mm -hmm. Right. The but ones we have a list and we have, it's not, we have to include them all, yeah. right? Yeah. So what, what we suggested early on was that since we're probably going to get to 50,000 before we get to the next general plan, the, the one I won't participate in. <laughs> <laughs> or hopefully me either. <laughs> um, is to look at those 50,000 requirements, the ones that, that are new requirements. We've listed them, but we really haven't gone through and explained to you or discussed with you what the intended purpose of those are. And we can certainly do that. That is a good topic for an agenda. But my point was we have to, we have to include them all. I would, yeah. I would expect that we probably should at least address them all. So by, we aren't required to have them all in the plan, even if we reach 50,000 before the plan expires. But if we do, you're a major step towards the next plan of having them in place. And I think from a staff perspective, we're gonna suggest you try to include them in this plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wholeheartedly support it because in my opening comments, I talked about uh, having a much t 
tighter general plan so that boards, commissions, councils make more reference of it than they do today. And, and some of those elements that are required when you reach the 50,000 are already kind of part of the existing plan. We just have to break them out. So like uh, the recreation element is required and that's actually in our open space element. There's a recreation part of that. So we can just break it out. The transit is all part of our circulation. Um, the, uh, tra so some of that stuff we already kind of have in our plan under, but they're labeled differently or under other plans that so we can break those out and expand on them. One, one more plug for your predecessors, both the 2003 and the 2015 plans, the committees looked well in advance and well out. They did not constrain themselves to, I have eight items I have to address and eight elements. They looked beyond that and that's why there's additional information in those elements that are required that actually address other issues that are now going to be required when we hit 50,000. Thank you, George. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Yeah, I, Rod. Just, I just wanted to say we're, we're going to reach out to groups with whom we might talk as part of the public outreach. But another thing we might do is if you're going to have uh, a general public event rather than a, a specific group you're visiting, you might reach out to uh, groups like CWAG and Save the Dells who have very large email lists and could mm -hmm. help you publicize those events. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And we also have, uh, you know, we have, we're, we'll be doing press releases too. And we've already talked to Cindy Barks before about doing an article in the paper. Yeah. And we can send information out with people's water bills and uh, through HOAs and stuff. So we're already accumulating getting those email lists together to use and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One more hand goes up. Ralph yes, goes. Ralph. <laughs> Point of order, I, I look like you were gonna adjourn the meeting. We no, no, I got a public comment. <laughs> exactly, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I, but I wanted to make sure that you all are feeling warm and toasty on the progress we're making today. <laughs> and fuzzy, right? You're fuzzy. fuzzy. <laughs> Any public comment? Do we have anybody online? No. If there's no public comment, then wishing you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now I have another point of order is, is if we're going to talk about the January 25th meeting, I have uh, an item I'd mic? like to put on the. You've got to use your mic. I'd like to have an item to put on that agenda. What might that be? Uh, the thing that was on the agenda for today before we amended it. That the start, at the start of our meeting, we had that uh, initial outreach. And I think that we should put that on the next agenda since we truncated it here today. And there's, and in fact, Tammy gave us some homework a couple weeks ago. And uh, I'd like to see the results of that homework on there. Uh, you've got, are question you sure you want to see the results of how much input we've gotten back from well i'm going to ask right now who all have you received responses from in addition to me um a few of you and i can't tell off my top of my head right. um i've had other things on my mind for that I but i i have all your anyone who sent to me any comments i do have them and i've been squirreling them away in a folder separate because like I said, I had to, when I came back Monday, I had 290 emails I was swimming through. So they might still be in that sea of emails if you've sent it to me over the last last week. So I am scrolling those away, and we'll get all that information together, your comments. But over the break before, keep reading the plan. You see topics that need to be addressed or expanded on. Let us know. Any ideas where we can get more information you're getting send them to me we, we're we're in, we're in taking everything right now and i've been reading your guys's comments and your survey questions and some of the survey questions may be better for the open house so because those are going to be more of the open-ended questions than more specific questions so um, we already have a lot of information from the census data we kind of don't want people to repeat that at all we're trying to keep it we want people to answer the questions and you got to be kind of careful what you ask them. Um, 
some questions I saw recently were like, how long have you lived in Prescott? That would be a good question to ask so we could see people who are responding how long they've lived here. Um, those are some of the other things. Um, age, age ranges, you know, things like that. Another question, how far do you have to commute to work? Uh, some people may have to, some don't. Now help us also, or are you retired or do you work from home? We'll have those kind of breakouts. So we have a lot of questions and we will bring those to you before we have them on the website so you can vent them before they go live. So we will have that for the next meeting too, the survey questions. Um, that we have already, and I'm still getting some from our our work group, our other work group, um, too. So they're still inputting questions. <laughs> <laughs> Wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll meet next month. I adjourn the meeting. <laughs> <laughs>